Google search board formula volume calculator. There we go. Okay, I'm Taj Burrow. Your level, advanced, your fitness, excellent. Your age, 35, 160. Calculate. So if I'm Taj Burrow, I should be surfing 25 liters of volume in weak waves, at least. But since I'm Taj Burrow, I actually surf less than that. Welcome to Shred Show, I'm Chris, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. Shred Nation, it's been a minute and I missed your faces. When it comes to shortboards, which is roughly anything with an outline similar to this, you can almost always make it better in small waves by making it wider, thicker, shorter, or flatter. All four of those things used in different combinations generally make a board better at planing across water. And the same rule applies when you take a shortboard designed for a professional and try to make it better for average surfers. Employing about three of those tactics or in some cases just two or maybe all four will make nearly any board easier to stand up on and plane across water on a wave with stability but the price that you pay for that is a decrease in your ability to maneuver the board quickly. If you saw our episode on Taj Burrow's Whiplash or if you are lucky enough to be surfing one yourself you know that board is very narrow, very thin, and it also has a lot of curve in its rocker. It's also very long when you compare it to modern trends in shortboard length. Those things make that board hyper responsive to the ways that you want to maneuver it, and it makes sense why you'd want to surf it in waves that are six foot tall and steep. You already have a heap of speed from the wave's power, and you need this low volume sensitive machine to help you control that speed. But if you surf that board in knee high waves, the same things that make it perform in good waves will work against you, and if you weigh as much as I I do, you're basically just going for a casual swim in the ocean that day because you're not getting to your feet. This board is an exact replica of the beach buggy that Taj won last year's trestles contest on. It's shorter, wider, and flatter in the rocker than Taj's whiplash that he surfs. And if you measure this board next to a stock beach buggy of the same length, the stock one is wider and slightly thicker than this board, making it a little bit more friendly for civilians. Dimensions on this board are 5.9 by 18.38 by 2.2 zero with 24.29 cubic liters of volume. Stock dimensions are 5.9 by 18.63 by 2.21 thick at the stringer and it's got 25.2 liters of volume. You might be able to see pencil marks that I left on the bottom of this board and I'm not going to give away everything here but if you want to get nerdy like I do you can use a straight edge to get a rough approximation of the rocker numbers that Matt comes with on this board by setting a straight edge here and then using a ruler to measure rocker at 0, 3, 6, 12, 18 and 24 inches in from each side. What you'll learn is that Taj's board has slightly more tail rocker curve and slightly more nose rocker curve than a stock beach buggy and shit gets proper crazy when you recognize that the rocker curve in this board coupled with the low volume fundamentally makes nothing about this thing useful in small waves for a 35 year old man at 160 pounds. If you can remember back to the Hurley Pro in September the waves that day were not very good at trestles and it was mental to see how relatively easy Taj was climbing the face of those mushy waves all the way up to a burger of a lip when compared to the people that he was competing against. That's obviously due to how good Taj Burrow is at feeling out small waves, but his ability was enabled by the tail rocker in this board because it allowed him to draw tight arcs up to the lip on rail. It also has to do with fins, but before we get to that and concaves, it's already really obvious just looking at Taj's dimensions that he's probably one of the best three guys in the world at creating his own speed when a weak wave doesn't want to give it to him. He obviously doesn't need that much help when it comes to planing from his surfboard, even where other world tour surfers might want a little bit less rocker or a little bit more thickness relative to their weight. Now many professional surfers want the perfect balance of drive and looseness in their surfboards and a popular way of getting that is combining opposites when it comes to rocker and fin relationships. For example, you can decrease the amount of tail rocker you have in your board to add drive and then use smaller fins to add a loose element to how the board surfs. Or you can increase the tail rocker to add looseness and then use big fins to add drive. The idea everyone is after is getting everything from just one board and by the looks of Taj Burrow's setup it seems like he takes sides with guys like Taylor Knox who prefer a little bit more flip in the tail and then using a bigger fin for drive and it shows by his use of the accelerator fins by FCS2 
that we have courtesy of Fnatic. The accelerators are by far the biggest fins in the FCS2 Essentials medium range, beating all other sets by roughly a square inch of total surface area between all three fins. Not only does the size of these accelerator fins add drive to Taj's Extreme Tail Rocker, but so does the way that these fins are built. Whenever you see black on a surfboard fin, that's usually a sign that that black part is the stiffest part of the fin, while most of the flex is happening in another part of the fin. It could be that the size of these fins, accompanied with the stiff base, is what allows Taj Burrow to get away with so much tail rocker in flat-faced waves, because it gives him that tight turning radius of having so much curve in your tail rocker, while the big fins keep him gripped to the water like big tires on an F1 racing car. If you use Fnatic to test the accelerators against any other fins in your size range, it's really likely that you'll find the accelerators to be much more drivey than any of the other fins. So if you're testing fins with Fnatic and you have a set that you like in boards with a lot of tail rocker, tell us what those fins are in the comments below. Concave Vision is brought to you by the Sanook Straight Edge, not available in stores, but you can find the new Schooner at finer surf shops everywhere. To possibly win a pair of the new Block Party sandals from Sanook, stay tuned, smile, pass it on. Single concave, pretty deep single concave, staying consistent, shallowing a bit just after the first two fins, slight double concave, but it might just be a mirage. If you put your straight edge on the concave of one of these and measure the depth of the concave throughout the entire board, you'll find what I think is probably the most exciting thing about rubbing one of these boards down. This concave keeps a consistent depth from just in front of the first two fins all the way up until about an inch or two in front of the halfway mark. That means that water is flowing through the guts of this board from here to here, totally unimpeded, and it gives an engine for lift that essentially creates horsepower to get from point A to point B. In a board like this, that's really important because everything else about this shape is geared towards maneuverability. Concaves are really fascinating to me because in my view, you can give more volume or more width or a little more thickness to most surfers, regardless of their skill level, and they'll immediately notice a difference in how the board surfs. But concaves are a little bit like a tool that you learn to use over time, and a world tour surfer could use a concave like this to add predictability to how their board feels on rail and how it feels feels in transition. A consistent depth throughout this much of the hole's concave helps prevent that kind of start-stop surfing where you have to regain speed immediately after you do a maneuver, and it helps someone like Taj Burrow hook into turns and carry momentum while acting as a force multiplier for the superior skill that he has for keeping more speed in his board than what his volume would imply was possible. The double concave through the fins is probably so slight you can't even really call it a double concave. The depth through here and here is probably only like a 32nd of an inch deeper at most than the depth of the stringer. So if you say you can feel the difference between how that surfs relative to a straight single concave, then you probably are Taj Burrow. In theory, it loosens up the tail a little bit in flat spots where a pure single concave would be a little bit more sticky. I think this series of Exacto replica boards that Lost is putting out are a real testament to just how good the surfers are that Matt works with. I say that because of how hard it would be for most surfers to have fun on a shape like this. Having said that, if you line up roughly with Taj's height and weight, and if you're one of the better surfers in your lineup, then this board might really have a place in your garage. The best thing though about this board is getting a front row seat to a master board builder and his collaboration with one of the world's best surfers. Sandals are for backyards, beers, and barbecues, so to possibly win a pair of barely available block parties from Sanook, drop a comment below telling us what your favorite after surf session eats are. Juanita's Taco Shop, Bruno's Breakfast House, tell us below to help your fellow rippers who may be looking for grinds during a surf trip to your neighborhood. As an added bonus, tell us what the tide is at your home break and you may win a Mariner Tide Watch from Freestyle. I'm hyped on these guys because they were the original Tide Watch company to start modeling wristbands after surf leashes in the 80s. This one's got the butteriest wristband you could ask for on a watch and it tracks tide digitally so you actually get to see the height of the tide not just whether it's at the high or the low for the day. One last thing, Lost Surfboards will be at Surfrides Camp Shred in Cardiff by the Sea, California this coming weekend. Basically it's a bunch of surfboard brands showing up to San Alejo campgrounds with trucks full of boards and letting everyone surf them for the weekend. I'll put a list of all the other brands who will be there in the info for this video so check that out. If you were one of the many thousands who came through last Last year, you know it's a killer chance to surf all kinds of boards in the sometimes soft but perfect reef breaks just a few steps away. Shred Nation, that's it for this episode. The waves are up this Sunday and Monday for the Quicksilver Pro on the Gold Coast of Australia. But if you're the type who doesn't give a shit what the waves are like, if you're not there to surf them, we hope the waves are up wherever you are and we will see you next week on Shred Show.